place you don't need to make them right side. So make them so they're easier for you to uh, see. Okay. You can make lumps and plates. Unless you want to make them bigger. I think your hand's just tough enough for that clay. <laughs> you should have asked me about it. Yeah. Do so. you? Yeah. I suppose there's some kind of calluses on there. And my hands don't ever get stuck or bleed or whatever. Mm. You say it's really not a lot in there. It's finer than the clay that I use. Really? The garage is fine. So all I'm trying to do here is just stretch it out. I mean, this is obviously, let's see, if I think about it, you know where it sets. Uh, I usually weigh the clay out. Dinner plates would be 12 to 13 inches, <coughs> just four and a half pounds. So I get close to that. They never end up the same. They don't look like they've come out of, you know, what's the store? Belts? Yeah. Huh? Belts too? Or poles. Poles. Uh, Macy's. Target? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Target. Marshalls. that have a, a foot rim. Um, <coughs> usually I don't put a foot rim. If you look at the plates that are in that exhibition, you see the, they're just flat. <coughs> There's not a foot rim. It's not raised there. So this is the tip, which is about a half inch again. So by the time I take this wire and cut mm -hmm. through it, If you looked at those plates that are out there, each one of them might have a different edge to the rim. Now remember, clay shrinks. So
Clay has this memory, so you know, I'm going to try to bend that down so it doesn't. I mean, it's kind of a serving platter. I know I've made it now. If I can't get it too flat, I won't be able to pick it up. So I can just throw it on a bat. Do you normally throw it on a bat? And we make, this is the white slip in between that pocket at the end. We put some out. So, so I usually always cover it with a coat of white right after I've made it. So the one thing that's really pretty white, pretty stark white, <clears throat> and the clay I use, then it will mix with that wet clay and then it makes it kind of So you can then, you know, even now, most of them might have a line in it like that, where I scratch through and let the red clay go through. But if you want to, if I was going to maybe draw on this one, <coughs> you know, use the paint, I would let it dry. So it's bone dry and painted. But you can practice drawing it. Doing it on uh, leather hot uh, to bone dry, right? and we won't be able to do that unless we. we do they have hair dryers here? I bet you do. There, there's one uh, here. A couple one. of them. Right, couple. If, if you <laughs> if you make some pots with these little small little dishes, mm -hmm. I'm not setting a very good example here. I don't, you know, make them maybe seven or eight inches. That way, that and you get those made and trimmed, then they they'll be. I think today, tomorrow's supposed to be pretty nice weather-wise too. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to get those dry. You can even put them, dry them up in the kiln. We usually have a box fan too somewhere. What's that? We usually have a box. There's a box fan. I know it's been around here because I've used it in classes. Uh -huh. But you just let it have one end of the table, and then you just keep turning stuff, and you dry up right. relatively quick. Yeah, it's, uh, it just reacts better that way. So if you want to practice drawing in it like that, and then you can say, well. That's pretty stupid. You know, here's your opportunity to get rid of it. Oh, my. 